What's up, Internet? Welcome to Once Over. I'm Kaylee, and today we're going to be giving the Once Over to Ratatouille. 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 This is going to be a hard one since I literally cannot pronounce the name of the film. There will be spoilers. I just watched this gem which came out 15 years ago in 2007. Who would have guessed that a movie about an anthropomorphic rat who puppeteers a garbage boy would have made me cry so much? Well, me. I would have guessed that because I cry in every movie. Most simply, this movie is about two underdogs. A rat named Remy and a young, bumbling garbage boy named Linguini. The two of them rely on each other. Remy has a highly developed sense of taste and smell. Um, and so his family, his rat colony, his rat pack, if you will, appoint him as poison checker. But he has dreams of using his skills to become a chef in the vein of his idol Gusto, a French chef who is clearly inspired by the likes of Julia Child. However, given that rodents are the mortal enemy of all kitchens and restaurants, uh, Remy has to literally and figuratively pull the strings of Linguini's body in order to become a cook in his idol Gusto's restaurant. Gusto's motto is that anyone can cook, and Gusto kind of becomes Remy's spirit animal, or I guess spirit French chef, throughout the film. Likewise, Linguini relies on Remy, because without Remy, his career at Gusto's would be stifled by the fact that he can't actually cook. And he really needs that job because his mother recently passed away. And as we'll discover later in the film, he is actually Gusto's son, which makes him entirely self-reliant. The pair are completely symbiotic. Their union allows them to create an art form which ultimately leads to the pair's success. The film opens up with the Rat Pack escaping in a Pirates of the Caribbean-esque thrill ride, where Remy becomes separated from the group. Remy paddling on a cookbook is somehow more exciting than any of the fast-paced escapes in Waterworld. When he ventures out into the world, he discovers that he's in Paris. We're French now, so we drop the S. This is when he's actually led to Gusteau's restaurant. Now, I'm going to go critic a little bit, a la Anton Ego. The title, Anyone Can Cook. What's even more amusing is that Gusteau actually seems to believe it. My hot take is that Ratatouille doesn't really have a straightforward narrative, which I think is a little bit more Chef Boyardee than it is actually Michelin star. Obviously, the narrative is that rat helps boy cook, but what I mean is that there are so many ancillary details that the whole movie almost becomes jumbled up. So much so that I actually have absolutely no idea how to review this film. I've been struggling for hours trying to figure out how to create a review that isn't just the same length as the movie. This is the only negative thing that I'm really going to say. And really, I'm going to flip that to be a positive, because I think that this film immerses us in a familiar world from a new perspective. This is Peachy. She heard me talking about rats, so she wanted to come and say hello. They're not for you to eat. Anyway, this movie is directed by Brad Bird, who also did The Incredibles and The Simpsons. He was a consultant, and he directed the episode Krusty Gets Busted. And he also directed my favorite children's movie, which is The Iron Giant. Bird has a unique ability to avoid the usual kids' movie cliches while creating a thoughtful story. And I mean, let's be honest, there's nothing super unique about an anthropomorphic rodent, but there is something unique about Remy. He is cute, persnickety, thoughtful, and full of hope. But at the end of the day, he's still a rat. Even though Remy is lovely as a sole rodent, this movie really does not shy away from the ick factor when it comes to swarms of rodents. The movie never absolves Remy of the sin of being a rat, which is, of course, considered kind of a dirty creature, but rather it just acknowledges that he's a dreamer. Obviously, much of the movie focuses around the senses of taste and smell, which are notably two senses that are not easily represented in film. We're watching an entire movie about the sense of taste without being able to actually taste anything. Please do not lick your TV. So instead, this movie works really hard to bring food into the other senses. For example, when the rats experience new tastes, we get these astounding 
astounding animations that translate the reaction of tongue and nose into images and sound. What I love about these images is that they are so eye-pleasing, um, which is just like the rest of the film. The visual representations of taste and smell are a nice reminder that the love of food impacts all senses. How subtle it is to substitute animation of sight and sound in place of taste and smell. Ratatouille takes it one step further with the animation of the kitchen gadgets and food versus the human characters. The photorealism of the kitchen environment is stunning. I actually had to do a double take for the scene um, to see if it was actually animated or real. In contrast, the humans are caricatures um, where they have very exaggerated features. And really, Pixar's ability to blend these contrasting animation styles absolutely astounds me. The delineation between the inanimate food and the humans really drives home the message that food is almost transcendent. When it comes to movies about food, one of my all-time favorites is The Cook, The Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover, which notably shows the vileness of food. The cook grapples with food as a representation of decay, where in contrast, Ratatouille categorizes food as more than just a life source. The movies are similar in that both movies, food literally becomes a character. Of course, the most obvious nod to this in Ratatouille is that the main character's name is Linguini, which literally conflates food with monikers. I am so impressed with each of these movies and their take on food. Each character in this film is a trope, um, which I think is absolutely necessary in a children's movie, but it's also a bit of a boon to the message of seeking out one's true self. We have Remy, who is voiced by Patton Oswalt, um, who is the dreamer who wants to be more than what his family will let him be and Linguini, who is voiced by Lou Romano, um, who is the loner, uh, who has to fend for himself, but eventually gets too big for his own britches when he starts to gain any kind of undeserved respect. Brad Garrett voices Gusto, uh, the French chef that inspires Remy's love for cooking, and Gusto's ghost actually functions as Remy's guide throughout the film, but noticeably vanishes once Remy begins to figure things out on his own. Colette, who is voiced by Janine Garofalo, um, she works in the kitchen and eventually becomes Linguini's love interest in a very muted and minimal side plot of romance. Colette is a really interesting character because she really represents how difficult of a time um, a woman can have in a kitchen. Uh, she has to work that much harder than the men do just to be able to get ahead. I think this is really representative of the real restaurant industry, so I really like that aspect of the film. As a side note, why is it that everyone in this film disguises their voices except for Patton Oswalt? Um, I literally did not recognize Brad Garrett or Janine Garofalo, uh, but Patton Oswalt is just Patton Oswalt. When I was watching it, um, I was completely unencumbered by the voices of celebrities, and that really helped me to get lost in the movie. Um, except, of course, for Mr. Oswald. Um, so, I guess it's kind of funny, actually. Here he plays a rat guided by a ghost, uh, but in Happy, the TV series based on the comics, he actually plays a ghostly unicorn guiding a rat. All I can think about is, what if those two universes collided? We're getting our act together, Nick. No more drinking. No more whoring. No more filling chumps full of hot lead. We're getting our act together, Nick. No more drinking. No more whoring. No more filling chumps full of hot lead. There's also Skinner, who's voiced by Ian Holm, um, who's kind of the bad guy of the movie. Um, he has taken over Gusto's restaurant as the head chef after Gusto passed away, and he has it out for Linguini. And of course, there's Anton Ego, voiced by Peter O'Toole, who plays the food critic. Um, I absolutely love this character. Uh, we first learn that he absolutely loathes Gusto's restaurant, but now that Linguini has been the talk of the town, um, all of course with Remy's help, Ego decides to give the restaurant another try. So at this point in the film, the entire kitchen staff has quit after becoming frustrated with Linguini's ego, and Remy comes to the rescue by 
enlisting his entire rat pack to do the cooking for Ego's meal. He decides that the meal is going to be ratatouille. Ratatouille? It's a peasant dish. Ratatouille doesn't sound delicious. It sounds like rat and patootie. Rat patootie, which does not sound delicious. Moreover, this is actually the first time that Remy is cooking in the kitchen by himself and not as the puppeteer for Linguini. When Ego served his meal, he takes one bite and he is transcended into his own childhood. This moment, his eyes, the dropping of the pen, I cried like a baby. I tasted that food. I had all of those emotions, even though the whole childhood part just kind of looks like a Campbell's Soup commercial. After the meal, Linguini confesses to Ego that Remy was in fact behind the delicious meal. Ego ends up writing a rave review, um, screaming accolades about Gusto's restaurant. He says that we risk very little and that there are surprises from both the meal and the maker, which I think is such a sweet sentiment. He also says, Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. In the end, this positive review actually costs Ego both his career and his credibility. And in addition to that, it causes Gusto's restaurant to be shut down because everybody becomes aware of the rats. However, we end up getting a happy ending because Linguini and Remy actually start their own bistro, La Ratatouille, with Ego as an investor. Ego returns to his bliss and love of food. Remy proves that anyone can cook. And Linguini discovers his new talent for waiting tables on roller skates. And the symbiotic nature of animals and people, customers and restaurants, and most importantly, between friends, can continue until the end of time. I left out a lot. This movie has so many details that in all honesty, it's better to just watch it than it is to watch a review of it. I probably shouldn't say that, but whatever. Perhaps the ultimate lesson that I've learned, in particular from Ego, the food critic, is that the love of food, or in my case, the love of movies, shouldn't be tainted by the want to critique. I would love to hear about some of your favorite movies of this film that I ended up leaving out because I just didn't have time to talk about them. Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you subscribed, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.